In the vast expanse of our cosmic neighborhood, orbiting the majestic ringed planet Saturn, lies a world of stark contrasts and scientific mysteries. Dione. Named after the titaness of Greek mythology, Dione's bright, reflective surface hides ancient scars and geological wonders. It's the fourth largest in a system of over 200 known satellites. By diameter, a mere 1,120 kilometers wide, smaller than the width of Texas. Yet despite its modest size, this frozen world holds secrets that continue to captivate planetary scientists and astronomers alike. Today we journey to this distant moon, a place where icy cliffs rise above cratered plains, where mysterious, wispy terrains streak across the surface, and where the forces of orbital resonance have shaped a world unlike any other. How was Dian discovered? Like many of Saturn's moons, Dian's discovery dates back to the dawn of telescopic astronomy. It was first spotted by the renowned Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini on March 21, 1684. Cassini, working from the Paris Observatory, had already discovered Saturn's moon Iapetus two years earlier and would go on to discover two more of Saturn's moons, Rhea and Tethys. Initially, Cassini simply called it Saturn IV, denoting it as the fourth moon of Saturn in order of distance. It wouldn't be until 1847 that English astronomer John Herschel suggested using the names of Titans from Greek mythology for Saturn's moons, and thus Dione received its mythological name. The name is fitting. In Greek mythology, Dione was a Titaness, often described as the daughter of Oceanus and Tethys, and sometimes considered one of the consorts of Zeus. Some myths even suggest she was the mother of Aphrodite. Like its mythological namesake, the moon Dion would turn out to have surprising connections and relationships to other bodies in the Saturnian system. But more on that later. For nearly three centuries after its discovery, Dion remained little more than a point of light in our telescopes, a mysterious world about which we knew virtually nothing. Even with Earth's most powerful observatories, this distant moon revealed few of its secrets. All of this would change dramatically with the dawn of the space age. The Voyager era, first glimpses of a frozen world. Our first close glimpse of Dion came from NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, which flew by the Saturnian system in November 1980. As Voyager approached, Dion began to transform from a mere dot of light into a world with distinct features and character. The Voyager images, though limited by the technology of the time, revealed a moon with a complex surface. Dion appeared heavily cratered on its trailing hemisphere, the side that faces away from its direction of orbit. The largest of these impact craters is Evander, a basin approximately 350 kilometers in diameter. Other significant craters include Aeneas and Dido, named after characters from Virgil's Aeneid. But perhaps most intriguing were the strange bright streaks that crisscrossed portions of its surface. These features, which scientists dubbed wispy terrain, appeared unlike anything seen on other worlds at that time. With a limited flyby and imaging capabilities, Voyager could only whet our appetite for knowledge about this enigmatic moon. The spacecraft measured Dion's diameter at about 1,120 kilometers, making it Saturn's fourth largest moon after Titan, Rhea, and Iapetus. Voyager also determined that Dion has a density of about 1.48 grams per cubic centimeter, suggesting a composition primarily of water ice with a modest rocky component, likely containing a small silicate core. But the brief encounter left planetary scientists with more questions than answers. What were those mysterious wisps? How did Dion's surface evolve? What forces shaped this distant world? It would take another spacecraft, bearing the name of Dion's Italian discoverer from 400 years ago, to truly begin unraveling these mysteries. The Cassini Revolution, Unlocking Dione's Secrets. In July 2004, NASA's Cassini spacecraft entered orbit around Saturn, beginning what would become a 13-year mission of discovery throughout the Saturnian system. This sophisticated spacecraft carried a suite of scientific instruments that would revolutionize our understanding of Saturn and its moons. Cassini conducted several close flybys of Dion during its mission, coming as close as 99 kilometers, 61 miles to the moon's surface. These encounters provided unprecedented high-resolution images and a wealth of scientific data 
about this mysterious world. One of the most significant discoveries came when Cassini revealed the true nature of the mysterious, wispy terrain first glimpsed by Voyager. What had appeared as bright, streaky deposits from a distance were actually exposed ice cliffs, the faces of enormous faults cutting through Dion's icy crust. These features, now called casmata, are in some cases hundreds of kilometers long and several kilometers deep. The most prominent of these features is Palatine Casmata, a massive system of fractures stretching more than 600 kilometers across Dion's surface. Other major fracture systems include Padua Casmata and Carthage Fosse. In some places, these fractures cut through craters and other surface features, indicating they formed relatively recently in Dion's geological history. But what caused these enormous fractures? The leading theory is that they formed in response to global stress patterns in Dion's icy crust. As Dion cooled and evolved over billions of years, its crust would have experienced tension and compression forces that ultimately led to fracturing. Some scientists believe these fractures may be evidence that Dion once had a subsurface ocean that froze over time. As water expands when it freezes, the growth of ice would have placed enormous stress on the outer crust, potentially causing it to crack in the patterns we see today. Others suggest that tidal flexing, the stretching and squeezing of Dion due to Saturn's gravitational pull, may have generated enough heat and stress to create these features. We still don't have all the answers, but what we do know is that Dion is far more than just a frozen, inert world. Dion's Steady Dance a moon locked in resonance. Dion orbits Saturn at a distance of about 377,400 kilometers, completing one orbit every 2.7 Earth days. Like many moons in our solar system, Dion is tidally locked, meaning the same side always faces Saturn, just as our moon always shows the same face to Earth. But Dion's motion isn't just a simple, solitary loop around its planet. It's part of an intricate gravitational ballet with other moons. Perhaps the most fascinating of these relationships is Dion's two-to-one mean motion resonance with Enceladus. This means that for every one orbit Dion completes around Saturn, Enceladus, the smaller geyser-spewing moon, completes exactly two. This isn't a coincidence. It's a gravitational lock that has shaped both moons in profound ways. This resonance creates tidal forces, a constant gravitational tug of war that flexes and heats the interiors of both moons. On Enceladus, this heating is so intense that it fuels massive cryovolcanic geysers, blasting water vapor and ice into space. Dione, being larger and farther out, experiences gentler tidal heating, but it's still enough to possibly maintain a liquid ocean beneath its icy shell. But Dion doesn't just dance with Enceladus, it also has two tiny companions of its own. Meet Helene and Polydeuces two minuscule moons that share Dion's orbit. These so-called Trojan moons are only a few kilometers across and occupy Lagrange points, gravitationally stable zones where objects can trail or lead a larger moon without being pulled away. Helene orbits 60 degrees ahead of Dion, while Polydeuces 60 degrees behind, like cosmic bookends in an endless celestial chase. What's beneath the surface? The case for a hidden ocean? One of the biggest mysteries surrounding Dion is whether it harbors a subsurface ocean, a vast, salty sea trapped between its icy crust and rocky core. The evidence, intriguing, but not yet definitive. During its flybys, Cassini detected a weak but measurable interaction between Dion and Saturn's magnetosphere. Some scientists interpret this as evidence of a conductive layer beneath the ice, possibly a briny ocean. Additionally, Dion's extensive fractures and smooth resurfaced planes hint at past or even ongoing geological activity, which could be driven by liquid water sloshing beneath the surface. If Dion does have an ocean, it would join an elite club of ocean worlds in our solar system, places like Europa, Enceladus, and Ganymede, where hidden seas might just harbor the right conditions for life. But unlike Enceladus, which sprays its ocean into space for easy sampling, Dione keeps its secrets locked away under miles of ice. A tale of two hemispheres, craters, cliffs, and mysterious plains. Turn a telescope toward Dione, and you'll immediately notice something strange. 
one side looks completely different from the other. The trailing hemisphere, the side that faces away from Dyne's direction of orbit, is heavily cratered, pockmarked with ancient scars from billions of years of impacts. The largest, Evander, stretches 350 kilometers, nearly a third of Dyne's diameter. Other craters, like Aeneas and Dido, tell a story of a violent past, frozen in time. The leading hemisphere, the side that faces forward as Dion orbits, is smoother, with vast plains where craters seem to have been erased. This suggests geologic resurfacing, perhaps from icy volcanism, tectonic shifts, or even slushy water oozing up from below. Then there are the wispy terrains, those bright, jagged streaks first spotted by Voyager. Cassini revealed them to be gigantic ice cliffs, some towering hundreds of meters high, where Dionese crust has cracked apart like a frozen eggshell. The exposed ice, fresh and reflective, gleams against the darker, radiation-darkened terrain around it. Could Dion ever host life? It's a tantalizing question, and one that hinges on whether Dion has liquid water, energy sources, and organic chemistry. Liquid water? Possibly. If an ocean exists, it's likely salty and squeezed between layers of ice and rock, kept liquid by tidal heating and radioactive decay. Energy, tidal forces, and chemical reactions in the water-rock interface could provide enough energy for microbial life, similar to what scientists speculate about Europa and Enceladus. Organic molecules? Cassini didn't detect direct evidence, but Saturn's system is rich in complex chemistry. Future missions might find more clues. For now, Dion remains a maybe in the search for extraterrestrial life, but that's what makes it so compelling. Will we ever go back? The future of Dion exploration. Since Cassini's mission ended in 2017, with its dramatic plunge into Saturn's atmosphere, no spacecraft has returned to the Saturn system. But scientists are already dreaming up ways to revisit Dion. Proposed missions include an orbiter dedicated to mapping Dion's surface in extreme detail, a lander that could drill into the ice and search for chemical traces of an ocean, a flyby probe equipped with advanced radar to see beneath the ice. Until then, Dion remains a mysterious, frozen enigma, a world of cliffs, cracks, and hidden depths, silently orbiting Saturn as it has for billions of years. A moon of mysteries, the unsolved riddles of Dion. Despite everything we've learned, Dion still guards its deepest secrets. Some of the biggest unanswered questions include, one, is there really an ocean beneath the ice? The evidence is circumstantial but compelling. Cassini's magnetometer detected strange fluctuations in Saturn's magnetic field near Dion hinting at an electrically conductive layer, possibly a saltwater ocean. If confirmed, Dion would join Enceladus in Europa as one of the solar system's most promising ocean worlds. But without direct measurements, we can't say for sure. Two, why are some regions so smooth? Dion's leading hemisphere is suspiciously free of craters, suggesting something erased them. Was it cryovolcanism, icy lava, water, ammonia, or methane, oozing up and resurfacing the terrain, tectonic activity, shifting ice sheets smoothing out the landscape over time, ancient subsurface slush, a now frozen ocean that once welled up and refroze, we won't know until we get a closer look. Three, what created the wispy terrain? Those bright jagged cliffs, some stretching hundreds of kilometers, are one of Dion's most striking features. But how did they form? Tidal stresses? Saturn's gravity flexing and cracking the ice? Freezing ocean expansion? If Dion once had a subsurface sea, freezing water could have burst through the crust. Orbital resonance shifts? Past gravitational tugs from other moons might have fractured the surface. The truth may lie in a combination of these forces, but until we land a probe on Dion, we can only speculate. Dion in context, Saturn's mid-sized wonder. Saturn's moons come in all sizes, from tiny irregular chunks of ice to the planet-sized Titan. Dion sits right in the middle, big enough to be spherical, but small enough to have avoided much scientific attention until now. 
How Dione stacks up against Saturn's other moons. Titan, 5,150 kilometers. The Giant, a nitrogen-rich world with lakes of methane. Rhea, 1,527 kilometers. Slightly larger than Dion, heavily cratered, and possibly with a faint ring system. Dion, 1,122 kilometers. The middle child, icy, fractured, and possibly ocean-bearing. Enceladus, 504 kilometers. Tiny but mighty with erupting geysers and a confirmed subsurface sea. Mimas, 396 kilometers. The Death Star Moon, scarred by a single gigantic crater. Dion may not be as flashy as Titan's atmosphere or Enceladus's plumes, but it's a critical piece in understanding how Saturn's moon system evolved. Its mix of ancient craters, young fractures, and possible ocean makes it a geological time capsule, a record of tidal forces, impacts, and internal heating over billions of years. Why Dion deserves another mission. Since Cassini's mission ended, no spacecraft has returned to Saturn. But scientists are pushing for new missions, and Dion is a prime target. What could a future mission discover? Direct proof of an ocean. A lander with seismic sensors could listen for sloshing water beneath the ice. Chemistry of the fractures. Are there organic molecules in those bright ice cliffs? Age of the surface. Did Dion's resurfacing happen recently, or billions of years ago? Proposed missions like D-I-O-N-E a dedicated orbiter, or journey to Enceladus and Titan, JET, could include flybys of Dion. Even a simple impactor probe, smashing into the surface to analyze ejected ice, could reveal secrets about what lies beneath. A silent world with a story to tell Dion may seem like just another icy moon in a solar system full of them, but look closer and you'll find a world of contrasts and contradictions. Ancient yet active. Its craters speak of billions of years of impacts, while its fractures hint at recent geologic drama. Frozen yet possibly fluid. An outer shell of rigid ice could hide a hidden sea. Isolated yet connected. Locked in gravitational dances with Enceladus and Saturn, shaping its destiny. In the end, Dion reminds us that even the quieter worlds in our solar system have tales to tell, if we're willing to listen. So the next time you look up at Saturn shining in the night sky, remember, orbiting that distant ringed planet is a world of ice and mystery. Dion, a moon that's been silently watching for billions of years, waiting for us to uncover its secrets.